Hallelujah. Woo. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. Well, the praise team has delivered, set the stage. So let's sow some seed. Let's go to Isaiah 54, verse 3. Isaiah 54, verse number 3. When you get there, say, I'm there. Amen. The Bible says, for thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Father, I just thank you this morning for the awesome opportunity to minister your word. And Father, I ask that you will give me your words of wisdom, knowledge, and revelation. Father, speak in the lives and situations and circumstances. And the Holy Spirit, have your way. Move how you want to move and do what you want to do. And I thank you for what you're going to do in advance in Jesus' mighty name. If you believe it, say amen. 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 This morning, I'm talking to people that are carrying potential. When I say potential, I'm saying that there is more to you than meets the eye. You are bigger on the inside than your current situation. I'm talking to people that you are living, you are an eight, 8 by 11 living in a 4 by 6 frame. <laughs> I'm talking to people that are carrying the destiny of God. You have received a prophetic vision or a prophetic word concerning your future. And sometimes this can be frustrating because what you see on the outside of your life does not match what you see on the inside. I know the world is looking crazy now, but your life has been put here at this current time to make a difference. Your life is supposed to be the dream of God coming true right in the middle of the nightmare of the enemy. I know what we can begin to look at what's going on in our world and can begin to get a little discouraging. But I come to tell you this morning, don't be discouraged, be encouraged. God knows exactly what is going on and the world does not dictate to you what's going to happen in your life. They may be having a bad day, but God has not called you to have a bad day. They may be living in a nightmare, but God has not canceled your dream because of what the world is going through. Amen. So I come to tell you this morning to pick up your vision, pick up what God has told you years ago because God is ready to bring it to pass. How many people know that the time is short? That we're in the last sliver of time. This is the last of the last day. So things that used to take 10 years ain't going to take 10 years no more. God is expediting, speeding up destinies, amen. And it's up to you not to uh, shrink back now, amen. It's up to you to keep spiritual momentum to going so you can blast right into the destiny that God has for your life. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to into my dream, Amen. I'm not going backwards, amen. I'm going into my dream, amen. This ain't no sad day. This is a joyful day. For this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it, amen. God is not done. God has not changed his mind. Come on. Pull up Psalms 126. The Bible says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion... We were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord had done great things for them. The Lord had done great things for us, wherever we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Hallelujah. Anybody ever been in a nightmare and then all of a sudden God flipped the script Amen. And all of a sudden, in a moment's time, you were out of it. And what you were crying about one day, the next day you jumped up and began to rejoice and be like, oh, my God, I went from a nightmare. Now I'm walking in a dream come true. We could almost call this ministry the dream ministry. Amen. 
Because this is a ministry where God brings the lowest, amen, people whose lives have been devastated, people that don't have a dollar to their name and brings them here and snatches them out of a nightmare and begins to transform them and prepare them and dress them to walk in prophetic destiny and prophetic dreams, amen. You, listen, you're in the middle of, of, of a manifestation of miracles, amen. Somebody say, I'm in a, I'm in a miracle, to walk in this thing now listen when you come to God he invests into your life he gives you potential to become someone greater than you think pull up 1 Corinthians 2 9 and 10 the Bible says but it is written I is not seen nor ear heard nor is entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him but God has revealed them to us through his spirit for the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Did you hear that? That eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those that love him. Amen. If you think God is operating your life haphazardly or spontaneous, you don't know God. God already, already has things prepared for you before the foundations of the world. It's things, unless he reveals it to you, they're surprises, amen? They have not even entered your mind. You ain't even thought about it, amen? There's some ridiculous stuff that God has planned for your life, and God's spirit will begin to reveal it. That's why it's insane to get validation from men, because men don't know your destiny. Your destiny comes from the Lord. God knows who you really are, amen? I might have an an idea unless God reveals it to me but listen don't look for your validation to come from me your validation comes from the Lord God Almighty because he knows who you are he knows my name what a song hallelujah now listen you know people who understand who you are in God because they respect you even before they, you become who God created you to be. See, sometimes it's good to qualify folks. Because, listen, anybody can jump on a bandwagon. Amen, but I want to see who's going to be with you when there ain't no bandwagon. When you ain't got nothing to your name. When you're just trying to get it back together in your life. And if you have anybody in your life that still sees value in your life, amen, then listen, God has given them the sermon to see beyond your current situation, amen. There's, look at you and they say, there's more to me than meets the eye. So I love Pastor Ralph and Pastor Diane. They have a prophetic eye. Amen. And they, I mean, we sitting over up in the faith home with nothing. They say, man, you got destiny all over you. Man, God's going to bless. We see God going to use you. Amen. God's got this. Amen. And he's, they, they don't see you for, for where you're at. God has given them a glimpse into your future. Amen. And they're bold enough to speak for God while you ain't got nothing. Really? You see that? I remember when I first started getting prophetic words, it, it was so refreshing. It was like, really? So God does have a plan for my life? That, that, that this is not it? Yeah, God wants to use you. God has a plan. God loves you. Listen, it's bigger than you think. Amen? And, and it began to become refreshing. And then it, it gave my faith something to attach to. Somebody say it's the, called the law of recognition. So you, so it, you, you don't need everybody to recognize you. You only need the right people to recognize you. The thief on the cross, despite how Jesus looked beaten and hanging on the cross, still seen him as the Lord of glory and asked him for the entrance into glory. Amen. Listen, it's not based on what you're wearing. It's not based on the car you drive. It comes by discernment. Amen. It comes by a visible that there's just something different about her. There's just something different about him. We see the anointing of God on your life. We see the purpose of God on your life. There's more to you than meets the eye. You can be working back in the yard 
yard. You can be working in the kitchen. You can be like David on the backside, but you're the man that God has chosen to be the next king of Israel. Amen. And listen, it doesn't matter where you're at. You can still carry an anointing in the kitchen. You can still carry an anointing in the yard. You can still carry an anointing at Walmart. You can still carry an anointing working at home. You can still carry the anointing of God despite where you're at. Pull up 1 Corinthians 1, 26 and 27. One of the greatest miracles that the Lord does in our life is transformation. It's amazing how the Lord takes nobodies and makes them into somebodies. 1 Corinthians 1, 26 and 27 says, For you see your calling, brethren, how that not, my many, not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things. Anybody ever been foolish in their lives? Then God has chosen you. <laughs> people that nobody else would pick, amen, that people would reject, those are the ones that God said, I, I chose them, amen. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. Now listen, when God calls the foolish, they don't remain foolish. When God calls the weak, they don't remain weak. They become wise and strong men, women of God. Do you remember the, the band of men that joined themselves around David before he became king? The Bible says that they came... Uh, disgruntled they were in debt they, they were in bond they were oppressed amen but they surrounded themselves around king david but it wasn't just king david they surrounded themselves around the anointing of god that was on david and all of a sudden those guys that were b b broke busted and disgusted f became eventually down the line david's mighty men amen so listen so you you gotta associate with the anointing you gotta associate with the things of god somebody say environments you need specific environments to activate to unlock who you are that's why when people leave church and they leave the things of god their whole spiritual life hits a brick wall and there's no manifestation of the character of god or the plan of god in their life because they jump out of the environment of god and you need to be around the right environment to unlock to release what's on the inside of you somebody say break out They became David's mighty men. They went from foolish and weak to these mighty men of, of, of God that were not afraid to walk into, somebody say gratefulness. Listen, I don't know about you, but I'm grateful for the Lord for where he has bought my life from. Amen. Even after all these years, my testimony is not old, amen. It's still fresh. It's still brand new. And the mighty men of David were willing to follow David into battles. They were willing to, listen, let the king uh, sit and take the hit for the king, amen. Because when you get transformed by God, there's a gratefulness that begins to come upon your life. You begin to realize if it was not for the Lord Jesus on my side, where in the world would I would be? I would still be in a crack house. I would still be at a, on a bar I might be incarcerated I might be six feet armor. when you begin to calculate the possibilities if God didn't choose to come into your life how the tape and the movie was playing out in your life listen it makes you grateful amen because my movie your movie was about to come to an end unless the intervention of almighty God jumped in and God came in and completely transformed your life you need to be grateful See, America has got to be careful because sometimes we get an entitlement mentality. We think somebody owes us something. Nobody don't owe you nothing, amen. You better be, thank God that you got breath in your body. Be hallelujah. Thank God when you jump out here and get in your car. Thank God when you go home and praise the Lord that you got a roof over your head and that you got a job to go through. You better be thankful. You must understand the Lord is not afraid of your weaknesses or your struggles. 
Many times we come, many times the Lord comes right in the middle of our struggles to speak a word to you about your future. You must understand that the Lord has the power to deliver you from you. Oh, you didn't catch that. <laughs> oh, my God. When I began to realize that the devil was only a part of my problem, and I began to realize that it was wrong thinking, wrong attitudes, wrong reactions that was devastating my life, that was messing my life up, that was destroying opportunities, that was putting me in physical harm, and I'd be like, God, I need you to deliver me from me, amen? I don't trust myself, amen? I, I'm Hallelujah, I could blow it. Somebody might push the right button. I might be cruising down the road. Some dude try to run me off, amen, and I might do something, amen, and God, I need you to protect me from myself I need you to deliver me from myself amen and some of us need deliverance not from a devil but from ourselves from our thinking from our attitude from these things that begin to rise up and try to block and destroy your destiny how many of us have blown opportunities and and and, and, and things that were given to us by making wrong decisions because we stopped looking at the big picture and we just begin to look at our how I feel amen and what they don't did to me amen and now I'm out of here I don't have to put up with it and you you blow the whole deal. Amen. Some somebody was trying to bless you with your decision completely destroys it and annihilates it. Pull up Romans 7, 24 and 25. Oh wretched man that I am, Paul said, who should deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord so then with the mind I myself serve the law of God with the flesh the law of sin. Now in those times one of the punishments for capital murder if you murdered somebody they would tie the dead corpse to your back and you had to walk around with this thing this dead body you had to carry it around the stench of it Amen. The, uh, now you got to begin to think about what you did. Amen. And Paul is saying our old man is like that sometimes. It's like this thing, amen, that, that listen, needs, is dead, amen, but it's still so close to me, it can begin to affect me. And he says, who's going to deliver me from it? He says, I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord, whom the Son sets free, is free in tea. I'm not just going to deliver you from a bunch of devils. I'm going to deliver you from yourself, amen? Some of y'all right now, listen, you're praying about stuff in your life. I've been there, amen, and still there, amen? But listen, you don't know when the master walks by, amen? And all of a sudden, he just takes that issue, amen? And then all of a sudden, he lets time play out. No, no big old thing, no, no explosion, nothing. The master just walks by and completely takes the issue. And then all of a sudden, he allows an event to begin to play out. And all of a sudden, you notice you don't have the same reaction that you used to have and you don't even realize that the Lord has delivered you from you let's look at someone who God came right in the middle of their struggle and he spoke a word to him pull up Judges 6 Thank you, Lord. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which was in Oprah. Hold on. Oprah, okay. <laughs> Not Winfrey. Amen. That pertained unto Joash. We're going to pray for her. Amen. Pertained unto Joash the Abrazite and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. And Gideon said, oh, my Lord, <laughs> if the Lord is with us, why then is all this befalling us? And where be all his miracles, which our father told us of saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hand of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, go in this thy might. 
and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? Somebody say Gideon. The Lord comes right in the middle of Gideon's fear and calls him a mighty man of valor. God's word did not match Gideon's current situation. You must understand when the Lord gives you a word that does not match your situation, that is the word to exit you out of your current situation into what he said. Amen. So when God comes and gives you a word, amen, it's for you to break out of your current situation. How many people know that that word propelled Gideon to come up from hiding under the wine press and take the mandate of God? And now from one second, in one word, he went from being a afraid coward to a deliverer of the nation of Israel. Look at your name and say, you better start looking for the exit sign. In your current situation. I'm about to get out of this. this. I'm about to get out of this. I ain't going to deal with this all my life. I ain't going to deal with this situation all the time. God is going to speak a word. Amen. To get me out. You must understand. when If God says something to you. You better take it to the bank. Because the Bible says it's impossible for God to lie. One of the most dangerous things is to get in the way of someone walking out prophetic destiny. Because God will not allow any man to make him out to be a liar. This is when you know that God can fight your battles. When you're walking in the will of God, fulfilling prophetic destiny for your life, amen, you don't have to fight no fight, amen, because someone has um, uh, uh, deceived someone to try to come against your life, to try to stop you, and they don't even realize they're trying to stop the prophetic word that God spoke over your life from coming to pass. And God is not going to be a liar. He's not going to let one word that he speaks over your life fall to the earth, amen. It's going to come to pass. Listen, if he's got to move 50 people out of the way to bring it to pass then so be it this is when we can say now the Lord God is going to fight my battles amen now you better get away you better not put your hands on me amen because you're not just coming against me you're coming against the prophetic destiny of God almighty that's why it's crazy to be out of the will of God because when you're out of the will of God then men can do anything to you Devils can do anything to you, but when you're in the will of God, all oh, heaven, listen, begins to surround your life, amen, begins to guard you, begins to back you up. Anything that comes into your life, got to deal with the presence of almighty God, amen. Look at you and say, you better not leave the will of God for your life. Somebody say protection is valuable. Gideon is asking the Lord, where are all the miracles? <laughs> Let me get a drink of water on this. Have you ever heard that? Where are all the miracles? This is one of the most insane questions for a Christian to ask. If God is going to do a miracle, then he needs someone to do them through. So if you're asking, why don't you just offer your life for God to do miracles through them if you really want to see them so bad? <laughs> so he's asking, where are all the miracles at? And God is saying, I'm ready to do a miracle through you, man. <laughs> are you ready to step up? He started reminding God, you did the miracles over here. You did the miracles over that. You did this and that. Where are all the miracles? You're going to be my miracle worker, Gideon. Get up. Let's go. I'm going to work a miracle through you. I ain't going to need 30,000 dudes. I'm going to use 300. Amen. Put to the beat down. Hallelujah on enemy forces. Amen. Or is it you don't want to do it? you rather sit in the stands and watch someone else do it. You know, it's easier to be a fan than to play in the game. 
Let me say it again. It's easier to be a fan than to play in a game. A fan doesn't have to practice. A fan doesn't have to de get, deal with criticism when you fumble the ball. A fan, there's no, there's no skin in the game for a fan. There's no price to pay for a fan, only the price of a ticket. So it's easier to be like, I just want to be a fan, amen? God, don't work a miracle through me because you're not really ready to pay the price. So when you ask yourself that again, you don't, don't ask God that. Ask yourself, are you, am I ready to pay the price to see these miracles that, that I've been illuminated to? God said, I'm loaded with miracles. I just need somebody. Who, who, who in the world can we send? God's calling the fans out of the stands. Come out of the stands and get in the game. And you'll, be, you'll see some miracles. I don't want to sit at home on YouTube and see miracles. Get off the YouTube and get in the game. Don't you ever get tired of watching other people with stuff that you want? I mean, one day I got tired. I'm tired of watching HGTV and seeing people buy houses, and I ain't got no house. I, I, you know what? I'm going to start researching this thing and see what, it, what I got to do so I, I don't want to be watching somebody else. I want my own show. I, I want the experience that I'm watching other people have. I want that experience for my own life. But until I broke out and started, didn't get comfortable or satisfied with watching everybody else and decide I want that for my life and I'm going to step out to get it. I'm going to break out of this wishing, this, this fantasy world, this just rolling dice to, to believe God that God can, can do it for me. Amazing. The one that was asking about miracles is the one God that chose to do the miracle through. Let me give you a key to your assignment. What bothers you? What irritates you is the key to your assignment. Now, listen, this requires homework. You're going to have to go home this week and say, what bothers me? What just gets me fired up? That could be a key to your assignment. Amen. Maybe you look at uh, 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 human trafficking or just some stuff like that and then you get mad. That, that could be an indicator that God is calling you into that type of ministry to see a, 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 a woman and people bound by that come out of that. So sometimes we, sometimes we cap the voice of God, and if we don't hear the voice of God in words, we, 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 we think we're not hearing from God. But the Bible says, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. The writer of the book of Luke said, I'm writing the book of Luke because it seems right to write these things down. He didn't receive no rhema word from God. It was just a little unction, a little push, amen, and it translated into the direction and the voice of Almighty God, amen. Are you ready to break out? What bothers you? What injustice irritates you? It could be a key to your assignment on earth. You could walk around the ministry and be like, man, they need a, a new this. They need a new that. That could be an indicator that you're a financier for the kingdom of almighty God. And God is saying that, listen, I'm trying to bring great wealth through your hands. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. But listen, if the righteous never have something to capture it in, how will we ever see it? Amen. See, I know my assignment is discipleship because I want to see people live successful Christian lives, not just in church, but outside of the church. I'm not satisfied with just a powerful church service. I want to see powerful believers walking in power outside the church. 
See, I know my assignment. That, that's what agree. I can go to a church, but that's not, amen. But listen, if I see people come to church and live defeated lives outside of church, that grieves me. That makes me upset, amen. And listen, my ministry is called to annihilate that, to equip people that you don't have to live success just in the church. You can live success outside of the church. You don't have to just have a worship experience in church. You can have an encounter with God outside of the church. I love what uh, Abby said. It, you know, this, these conferences, they're not based on a man. Your worship should be based on the person of Jesus Christ. That, don't mat- that means no matter who comes, I'm going to worship the Lord. Amen. Bonda come, Bonda don't come. I'm going to worship the Lord God Almighty. My, my level of worship is not based on who comes. My level of worship is based on the one that saved me and the one that delivered me. Amen. That never changes. He's the only one that can say, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. So why would your worship change? Oh, my God, are we telling on ourselves? Has it all been about a man? Has it all been about a conference? Is it really that shallow? Have we really become idolaters, amen, worshiping the image of a man and not worshiping the person of Jesus Christ? God will knock that down. Thank you, Lord. Now listen, even though the Lord has this amazing potential for your life, there is still a deciding factor to make potential a reality. And that is your acceptance into the identity that God has called you to be. Many times in the Bible when identity was revealed, the struggle was acceptance. Because the individual could not believe that God saw them like that. If you, could, if you could understand how God sees you, you would kick yourself for ever dealing with low self-esteem. If you could see how high, how, how the, the, the beauty, that the, the greatness that God sees you with, you'd be like, why in the world have I lowered my opinion of myself? Some of y'all need to raise the opinion of yourselves, not in a prideful way, but listen, attribute it to redemption. Listen, the father is not going to send his son Jesus to die for junk. That there had to be an equal or a greater value for Jesus to pour out his blood. Will you go and buy a car, amen, for $10,000 and you realize it's only worth $5,000? That's a bad transaction. You're not going to engage in that. But the Lord said to my sons, my daughters, you are valuable. You're so valuable. I couldn't use silver. I couldn't use gold. I couldn't use anything in heaven. I had to tap my son on the shoulder and and begin to say, the only thing I can find in heaven that's of equal value is my son. Amen. So it's actually an indictment against God. Amen. Against who he, the price he paid for your life for you to walk around with low self-esteem. Look at you. They say I'm valuable. No, you ain't going to take me out on no cheap date. I'm valuable. You don't take me to no McDonald's. Break out the money, man. I want to be, ladies, I'm going to help y'all. I want to be treated like the queen, my God. Go clean that car. Don't be coming up here in no dirty car that you ain't even vacuumed out. Put some, clean that thing, armor all it, put some uh, freshener, air freshener in that thing, and let's go, man. I'm not getting in that. That's a mess, amen? So you must think I'm a mess. Oh, go clean that thing up, man. Don't be showing up wearing some uh, uh, just shorts and, and flip-flops looking like you just you came out of the gym. Go freshen up. Put a value on yourself. And don't let anybody, because that person is showing you how they value you. You got me wrong, Amen. 
This ain't no cheap ch chick. <laughs> Come on, ladies. No. But sometimes when you don't know your value, you'll settle for less. Because there's been no validation. You'll take somebody with a low standard to validate you, just to make you feel accepted, amen, even if it's a cheap thing. Well, I guess I got to wait. You ain't the one. So I guess I got to wait, amen. I'd rather be alone with Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, till he sends me the, the king, amen, a king. Yes, enough is enough. Come on, we ain't settling for less. Ain't this the, ain't this the year of nothing but the best? Ain't right. Ain't this the year of nothing but the best? Why are we settling for less when God called you to have the best? Somebody say acceptance. God has the plan. He has the identity, but he needs your acceptance. Look at this conversation between God and Moses concerning Moses' call. Pull up Exodus 3, 10, and 11. The, the Bible says, come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I? that I should go to Pharaoh, that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. You see, God had a plan for Moses to bring his people out. He was chosen, but Moses did not see himself as God's deliverer. But to walk in the call of God, to bring God's people out, Moses had to break the limitations off his mind. There's people in this room right now, you have limitations on your mind. And these limitations did not come by your own making. They came from environments that you came out of. They came through relationships that you were involved in. They came through people's words that were spoken over your life. And it created this limitation on your mind. So when God comes and said, you can be this, you can be that, it don't fit, amen, because you don't see yourself like that. And now you're struggling with uh, seeing yourself as a son or a daughter of the most high God because you, you, you got these limitations on your mind. Look at you and say, we're going to break the limitations off today. I got to break free of limitations. Pull up uh, Isaiah uh, 52 too. The Bible says, shake yourself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose yourself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. See, God was speaking to people that were in captivity, and God delivered them and set them free. But sometimes you can be out of something, but still have the residue of what you went through sticking to your life. And sometimes you got to come to the place where you shake that stuff off. Notice he said, shake the dust off. That means she was down on the ground. Get up, daughter of Zion. Shake that dust off of your life. Amen. That's not you. You captive daughter of Zion, break that yoke off your neck. Amen. Anything trying to pull you, trying to control you, we, we break it off your neck right now. You're not going to be controlled. You're going to walk in freedom. Get this thing off my neck. You're not going to pull me around no more. You're not going to hold me down no more. You're not going to keep me out of what God has for my life no more. No. I'm getting this stuff off my neck. I'm shaking this dust off my life. Get off me. Get these thoughts. Shake these thoughts off my mind. Get off my mind. I remember God delivered me. I'm walking right here on my way to the thrift store. I felt this cold presence come in the middle of summer. And they said, we're going to take you back. I actually heard the voice of the devil. And I felt it trying to come on me. And it's nasty. I know. I under, see, you, you, sometimes you don't recognize unclean until you get clean. 
I never recognized how unclean they were till God cleaned me up and they tried to access my life once again and take me out. And I said, this, this foul stench and this, this icky feeling. And I remember saying, I'm not going to blow my voice. I just screamed. I said, no, I'm not going back. I shook that thing off me, and I've never heard those voices again. I'm writing, I'm talking to people. You have potential, but you've been allowing a limitation to restrict you, to stop you from stepping into what God has created you to be. We all have a history. Let me say it again. We all have a history. Listen, whoever you think is all that, we all got a history, guys. Amen. Pastor Tone got a history. Uh, Pastor Jeanette has a history. We all got a history. We didn't, we, this, this, this church thing is, is something that God bought, and we all have a history. But the enemy knows our history, and he will try to take who you were in the past to stop you from entering into your future. When you begin to break out, voices will begin to rise to remind you of who you were. But don't let voices make you stop. Ignore them and keep moving into the new identity. Listen, there's demonic voices. Some of y'all probably don't even, you, you assume them from yourself. But the minute you try to rise up and do something, you hear this voice coming out of nowhere saying, that you, you need to stop that. You need to put that down. You're getting a little too wild here. That ain't for you. You know you tried that before in your past. That didn't work. Amen. Look at all these people. And what he tried to do, he tries to, to make a difference between you, amen, and, and somebody, amen, that's maybe walking in, in, in what you're trying to get to, to make you think that you, it's not available to you. And listen, it's not, it's not some devil that jumped out of, the, out, 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 out of the sky. It's just a voice that rises up to challenge us, to try to pull us back when we try to break out. But you got to ignore that voice. Be like, you know what, devil, you a liar. I am not the person I used to be. And if God did it for her, he can do it for me. If God did it for him, he can do it for me, amen. I'm, I'm not backing up. I'm not going to listen to you no more. You know what? Oh, my God. I've been listening to you all my life. For I make a decision right now. I ain't listening to you no more. The devil doesn't want you to step into freedom. That's what the fight is about. Now, some people don't step into the new and break out. Because there's a comfort in the old. They don't want to go through the process of success and failure to become great. It's easy to rest in the old because you know it and there are no surprises. See, many people never break out and they stay in the, what I call the comfort zone. Because they don't, they, don't, they don't really want to go. Now listen, anybody that steps out, anybody ever start a business here? Well, you start a business. Sometimes you might start five businesses. Man, the first two past tone, failures. But you know, I didn't let that stop me. I kept pressing in. And the third one, bingo, I hit the jackpot. And I'm getting paid. Amen? So, so the enemy will try to make you not want to go through that process of success and failure and keep you uh, in the comfort zone. L look at your name and say, a comfort zone is a coffin to your spiritual life. And your spiritual development. You'll never break out into what God has for you unless you break out at the risk of maybe failing. Amen. Peter had to, Christ walked on the water and said, and, and Peter said, oh my God, that's the Lord out there. Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. And the Lord said, come on out of that boat, Peter. Amen. And Peter began to walk on the water. Guess what? He fell. But Christ picked him up because Christ always respects people that step out, people that break out. He's never going to leave you hanging. He's never going to let, let you just fall to the ground. He's not going to let you drown. Amen. He's going to deliver you. Oh, my God. None of them other dudes wanted to jump out, but you jumped out. You my man. See, this is dangerous. Because if you don't step into your future, you begin to look back at your past. Let me say it again. This is dangerous. Because if you don't step into your future, you begin to look back at your past. 
and eventually you'll return to it. Look at how the children of Israel responded to Moses when he was trying to get them to break out and they did not want to. Pull up Exodus 14, 12. This is the children of Israel responding to Moses who's trying to get them into a promised land. Did we not say to you in Egypt, leave us alone? Let us serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians as slaves than to die in the wilderness? Can you believe that in the place of transformation, it became so uncomfortable to them that they were willing to return to Egypt? See, before you step out, God's going to deal with you and you have to go through a process of transformation. But listen, change can be one of the most challenging things. To change something that you know, to change who you thought when you thought you were right, but now you find out you were wrong. When you had thinking patterns and behavior patterns and you thought they were right, and God begins to challenge you, to change you. Some people run from it. They they they're afraid of it. They don't want to change. Because listen, that 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 uh that personality is a is a is almost something that has guarded their lives. And now, God, you're asking me something to do to put uh, my faith in you. And I used to put faith in this this mechanism that I have uh, uh, set up in my life. And God is saying, now to, to enter to the promised land, to break out, you gotta break out of your old man. You got to let it down. You got to come out. Amen. I know. Listen, a lot of y'all try to walk around here like a tough guy, but you ain't no tough guy. You're really a, a real afraid. Amen. A crying, hurt child. Amen. And listen, God is saying, I see right through your facade and you need to come up because the tough guy cannot go into the promised land. I need to deliver and set that child free so he can grow up into maturity to step into what I have for, the, for, for, for the, his life. Amen. You, you'll be surprised the people here that have these facades and it's not who they are. I used to do this. I used to be the man in it. Yeah, right. The real guys don't, don't talk about it. That's why they said people, oh, man, somebody called a uh, man with death threats. Somebody that's coming to kill you ain't, go, ain't calling. So all them calls, get out of here. It became so uncomfortable they were willing to return to Egypt. They should have embraced the ideal of dying in the wilderness. Of course, I'm not talking about physical death. I'm talking about the death of that old identity. If you're going to break out, you have to die to your old identity. Pull up Galatians 2.20. The Bible says, I have been crucified with Christ. No longer I live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Listen, before you go through resurrection, you got to have a crucifixion. Crucifixion of your old man. My old man died in the, those dorms, amen, in the 90s. Because God wrestled with me and said, listen, we cannot go any further till you die to those plans, till you die to your plan B, till you die to your, to your, your way of thinking. That's got to die for you to step in to what I have for your life. Then it got quiet because nobody looks forward to death. No, I'm not looking forward to it. Oh, thank you. Sweating it up up here a little. Thank you, son. So listen, let me ask you a question. Are you ready to break out? Yes. Now listen, it's not just for us. It's for a whole generation. Yes. Last scripture, Romans 8, 19. The Bible says the entire universe is standing on tiptoe, yearning to see the unveiling of God's glorious sons and daughters. Listen, I know we want things, and that's nice. You can have things. But your number one focus needs to be, of course, your relationship with the Lord. 
Your number one agenda has to be, I need to become who God has created me to be. I need to step out of my earthly purposes and step into heavenly purposes. Amen? Because listen, judgment day, that's what you're going to be judged on. What did you do for my will? Will I be able to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord? Let me give you this before we close. You know, everybody, my God, man, the Lord spoke this to me. We try to complicate the things of the kingdom. And it's not complicated. Don't try to open a door up that God has not opened up. You don't want to open a door that God has not opened up. I want to be in ministry. I want this. I want that. But the Bible says, Paul said, the Lord counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Listen, no man can put you in the ministry. It's the Lord that puts you in the ministry. But what puts you, what's the prerequisite of going into the ministry? You can get the prop, you can get prophecies out the yin yang. Amen. You can have tapes, you can have recordings, you can have all of that. It don't matter unless you pass the test of faithfulness. Nobody wants to be faithful in the sound booth. Nobody wants to be faithful ushering. Listen, I used to work the sound booth and the ushering and the media before the Lord put me up here to preach to y'all. Amen. So you got to walk. And listen, it wasn't even about this. It was not. It was, my focus was not never about position. Lord, I just love you and I want to serve you. So listen, I had joy in the back. I had joy in the thrift store. There was no, my relationship was not based on where I was at, what title they conferred on me. The God was the center of my whole, my whole life. So it was never based on where I'm at or what I'm doing. It was based on the person of Jesus Christ. That's why people that had that focus don't change. Some people get in the ministry and they change because your focus was never Jesus you had ulterior motives, and when you got in the position, they manifested. And the real you came out. You don't have to fight for it. You don't have to jockey for it. Father, you got me usher in here. I'll be faithful here. Five years, I'll serve, I'll serve five years. Ten years, I'll serve ten years. It don't matter. This is it for you. Then this is it for me. So what? As long as I'm in your will, so be it. Amen. Stand to your feet. Seven Sundays. This is number two. Amen. And something would break forth in the church. How many people need healing in your body? Begin to thank the Lord. The Lord had gave me a word. He said, there's different ways to be healed. Of course, his word, but the glory is another way. When the glory shows up, healing comes. So begin to thank the Lord for what he's done in your life. Just begin to thank him right now. Father, we thank you right now for who you are. We welcome your presence in our life right now. We welcome your glory. Father, you are great. You are awesome. You are mighty. Father, we bless you right now. Father God, we welcome your manifest presence, your kabod, your Shekinah glory, Father God. Let it rest upon us even right now. Let it flow through us, Father God. Let your power, Father God, your fire, Father God, be made manifest through us right now. I declare right now the fire of God right now flowing through this congregation. The glory of God right now flowing through this congregation. The power of God right now flowing through this congregation. Father, we bless you right now. We thank you we are healed in your glory, your presence. Father, we thank you for Jesus. He's the representation of the glory of God. We thank you for his body. And right now, Lord, we receive his body. By his stripes, we are healed. Amen. Receive your healing now. I say covenant. Father, we thank you for the covenant. The covenant, Father, that you cannot lie. That you, Father, you said what you said you will do in our lives. We thank you that we stand before you now forgiven, 
washed in the blood of the Lamb as the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So, Father God, we remember the covenant that was broken for us, healing, peace, prosperity, abundance in our lives. Father, we receive it now. It's going to be a great week, and we seal it now with the blood of Jesus. Let's take it now. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout. Amen. We love you guys. Enjoy the 4th of July. Remember what it's about. Of course, we're going to have barbecues and eat. But remember that we live in the land of the free. Amen. The home of the brave. Amen. Pray for America. Amen. Take time to pray for this nation. Amen. That the freedoms will remain. Amen. Father, I bless your people. I thank you for the service, Father God. Thank you for impartation and revelation, Father God. And Father God, I bless your people as they go into this new week, Father God, I declare and decree that they're blessed going in and they're blessed coming out. Ephesians 3.20, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I can ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Amen. Be blessed.